Well, uh, until this year, we barely heard the word supply chain, but now it seems to be affecting just about everything in our daily lives. And you can see all those ships sitting out there. Three on your side, Susan Campbell, is live in Long Beach uh, near all the ports this morning, showing us the sometimes very long and complicated path to get products to all of us. Susan, good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, here we are in the port of Los Angeles, right next door, port of Long Beach. This is where about 40% of all of those goods that come into the U.S. on containers actually come in. Right here, this is just a very small example of how giant this complex is. So we have containers stacked dozens high. The one thing we haven't seen this morning so far since we got here, we haven't seen any of the cranes actually working. There's no movement with these cranes loading or unloading any ships that we've seen in the the area where we are. We have seen a couple trucks going over the bridge right now. Uh, that is pretty quiet too. Um, and then if you take a look, I want you to follow me this way just to give you an idea of the scope of this complex. We had the cargo containers over on that side. We have the cargo containers over on this side too. So this is one of the cargo ships uh, that we've seen move just a little bit this morning just to give you a sense of how much is happening here. Uh, all of the stuff that is going on here is affecting all of the businesses back home in Arizona. So with the American smooth dresses, we get a lot of volume from the skirt. In a sea of fabric and rhinestones, Julia Gorchakova is busy keeping up with her customers who all want new dresses for their ballroom dance competitions. I had to extend for my custom designs the probably make time it used to be eight to 10 weeks. Right now, we're probably right about 15, 16 weeks. Julia says the biggest challenge, she needs more employees. She's also facing some delayed orders because of supply chain challenges. Rhinestones sometimes not, you know, we ask for that amount and they don't set. Other businesses facing much longer, more serious delays to get what they want. From the time you pay for your order to leave the factory, um, or, or, or to leave the port, you're really lucky right now if you can get your goods in two months. Like incredibly lucky if you can get it in two months. The ripple effect of the supply chain crisis in the U.S. starts with factories overseas facing their own shortages of materials and workers. Once they're made, products are loaded onto trucks, then onto cargo ships to cross the ocean. Typically seven to ten days, worst case scenario, and then it just parks and it's just sitting anchored at, at port until somebody, until a crane operator and a truck trailer and a driver is available on the other side to process that, run it through customs, get it on a trailer and then get it out. The bottleneck doesn't stop at the docks. If you're lucky enough to have all those things fall in line and your container shows up at your warehouse door and you're able to have staff to unload it, the next thing that's hard is now you have to get delivery trucks to show up to pick it up, to get it to your consumer. Julia's working through it all. We'll do what we have to. To get these designs onto the dance floor. Right now here in the port of Los Angeles, we know there are about 18 ships working. We know there are about 100 other vessels out at sea anchored. And the Port of Los Angeles says the amount of time they're waiting on average to get into port from anchor about 18 days. So you can just see that this bottleneck is going to continue to persist because there just aren't enough workers to get the things off of shifts and then get them uh, onto trucks and trains to take them to consumers. Yeah, it's pretty sad to see that there's not a whole lot going on behind you. All right, Susan, thank you.